Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Uh, before I dive in, you may notice camera is a little bit different. Let me know in the comments section if you like this better um, with the camera pulled back a little bit. And if so, I will continue using this framing. So here is what's going on in Donald Trump's legal world and his issues and his current criminal trial. Um, before I dive into today's testimony, I, I wanted to share with you something disturbing, a couple of disturbing things that Donald Trump told Time Magazine about the possibility of political violence. So Time interviewed Trump on April 27th, and they asked him, could there be more violence? You know, if you lose again in this election, could there be violence? And Trump said, quote, I think we're going to win. And if we don't win, you know, it depends. It always depends on the fairness of an election. And then he re-upped his vow to pardon the January 6th domestic terrorists. So there you go. It's not going to stop. Um, next up is news about Trump's contempt of court orders. So this relates to the current trial that's going on. Judge Juan Mershon finally held Trump in contempt. Of course, he violated his gag order multiple times. Um, so out of the 10 comments and posts that were flagged by the prosecutor, Judge Mershon cited nine Truth Social and campaign website posts as being in violation of that the court's order. So the judge acknowledged Trump's First Amendment right to free speech, but he wrote, quote, Defendant is hereby warned that the court will not tolerate continued willful violations of its lawful orders and if ne that if necessary and appropriate under the circumstances, it will impose an incarceratory punishment. So no jail time yet, just a $9,000 fines, $1,000 for each violation. Hopefully, though, the judge is going to make good on his threat. And for anyone who's worried, because I saw comments before, people worried about, oh, it's going to delay the trial if he throws him in jail. No, it, it doesn't have to be during the week. He can send the pampered, spoiled brat to jail on a Friday evening. He can let him sit there for the entire weekend without his cheeseburgers and his Diet Coke. I guarantee when he gets out, he will be a new man. I mean, hell, even if he just did it overnight and there's no court on Wednesday, he could do it on a Tuesday night. Let him sit there until Thursday when he has to be back in, in court. You know, let's start with that. So anyway, Judge Mershon also said he will adjourn court on May 17th so Trump can attend his son's graduation. So... All the whining, all the crying that the right did. Oh, he's not even going to get to go to his son's graduation. They're so full of it. They just buy anything he says. It's so pathetic. So, you know, there goes another MAGA conspiracy theory out the window. There goes Trump's recent excuse to whine and play the victim. Um, as for the trial, Trump is said to be frustrated with his attorney, attorney uh, Todd Blanche. He has kind of taken a backseat lately to the other attorney, one of the other attorneys. Um, and Trump is said to be bitching to other people about Blanche. He's saying he's not being aggressive enough with witnesses. He's not following his instructions. Sources told the New York Times that Trump wants Blanche to attack the, quote, hostile jury pool and also the judge. And then the Washington Post spoke with sources who are saying that Trump is, quote, in a horrible mood, and it's hard for him to sort of do donor events afterwards or talk strategy after the sessions in court because he's just so livid. <laughs> and then in regard to the trial itself, the day started off with a couple of boring witnesses Basically, Trump's team is trying to force the prosecutor to authenticate videos, depositions, you know, all the evidence in the case. So they called the first witness. It was a guy named Browning. He's the head of the C-SPAN archives, Snoozeville, I know. So the Trump or the uh, prosecutor showed an old clip of Trump addressing the subject of his sexual assault accusers and all the women with whom he's accused of having affairs. 
Um, then they also showed a, a clip of Trump praising Michael Cohen for the work that he did for him. And then they had the C-SPAN rep confirm, yeah, those are legitimate. Next up was a witness named Philip Thompson. He is the regional director for a deposition company in possession of the E. Jean Carroll records. So this was more of the same, just, you know, authenticating that the deposition that Trump gave in, in that trial is legitimate. Um, and then, you know, they, they got to the meat of the trial and no pun intended, right? We're, we're done with Pecker. <laughs> so no meat. Um, but the Keith Davidson took the stand. He was the attorney for both Karen McDougal and Stormy, Stormy McDaniels. Now, Davidson, Davidson confirmed <laughs> that McDougal uh, he, and he met because she was dating one of his friends. He refused to say what he had personally discussed with McDougal because of attorney-client privilege, but the prosecutor was able to show a bunch of different text messages and show them to the jury. Basically, they were text messages between Davidson and the former head of the National Enquirer, Dylan Howard. Um, by the way, I found out Dylan Howard is not going to appear at this trial because he apparently has some sort of spinal injury and he is in Australia, I think it is. So that's why he's not going to show up. You know, someone else brought up, why can't he show up via Zoom or something? Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. Um, so anyway, Davidson sent text messages to Howard. In one of them, he said, quote, I have a blockbuster Trump story. Now, this is nothing new. Apparently, Davidson sent a lot of stuff over to the National Enquirer. Um, so Howard, the, the guy who ran the National Enquirer at the time, he responded, quote, I will get you more than anyone for it, anyone all in caps, um, you know why. So Howard later asked, quote, did Trump cheat on Melania? And then Davidson, because he was still trying to play it close to the vest at that point, he replied, quote, I really can't say yet, sorry. And he admitted in court, yeah, it wasn't that I didn't know, I just didn't want to give up the goods yet. So McDougal apparently met with the National Enquirer in June of 2016. She told them her story. And then Howard, the guy who ran the National Enquirer, texted McDougal's attorney later and said, it's a story that should be told. And Davidson said, I agree. So Howardson also messaged Davidson at one point and said that this needs to happen. Like there was a sense of urgency about being able to buy the rights to her story. But Davidson said he was also negotiating with ABC at the same time, but it was a different deal. You know, he was trying to play them against each other, but he admitted in court his client didn't really want to tell her story. So she preferred to sell it. If she could get the same amount of money or more from the National Enquirer, she preferred to give her story to them because she wanted the money. He said she wanted to rejuvenate her career. She needed the money. Also, he said she wanted to avoid becoming a scarlet letter, whatever the hell that meant. But basically, she wanted it buried. She wasn't looking to hurt Trump because remember, Karen McDougal claims that she was in love with Trump and she thought he was in love with her. <sighs> oh, poor girl. She doesn't realize he loves no one but himself. The only person he loves is the person in the mirror. Anyway, um, Davidson, McDougal's attorney, admitted on the stand that this deal would benefit Trump. And like I said, she didn't want the story to go public anyway. So it benefited both of them by burying it as long as she could get her cash. And a text from Howard, the guy from the National Enquirer, said that he was going to, quote, lay it on thick when he met with McDougal. So they were going to try to schmooze her to get the story. And then Davidson and Howard, after this deal closed, they kind of celebrated in text messages. And one of them said, you know, oh, well, you know, another one down and, you know, kind of like on to the next. And here we go. And Davidson suggested to Howard, you know, as a joke, oh, you know, maybe I could get an ambassadorship. Now, the prosecutor asked him about that in court, and he conceded, well, I thought this deal would help Trump's campaign. 
And so I was making a joke about being rewarded for helping out. So they took a lunch break. They came back. Davidson was back on the stand. Then they asked him about Stormy Daniels. And he said he primarily communicated with Daniels' manager. And he confirmed that in a call with the manager, she told Davidson, hey, you know, I got a call from this guy, Michael Cohen. He is threatening to sue over this Daniel story, over what my client wants to say. So Michael Cohen was very much on Trump's side at that point, out to take people down and stop them from spreading this around. And then Davidson also conceded the Access Hollywood tape was basically a godsend for Stormy Daniels. He told the jury that the release of that recording gave Daniels' story, quote, new life. Because, yeah, it was a complete shit show. It was like everybody's hair was on fire. Everybody was ready to kick Trump out, find a new candidate. So it was like the worst timing for Trump to have something else come up. And Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, made the deal for the Stormy Daniels deal, I mean, I should say, the very next day. She, he reached out to Daniels attorney, see, you know, confirmed, yeah, we want to pay for it, blah, blah, blah. So this was the very next day after that uh, Access Hollywood recording came out and, the, and it was all over the news. Davidson, though, said, okay, you know, let's do it. They agreed to October 14th that they were going to get paid. Stormy Dan Daniels was going to get paid. The payment never arrived. So on October 17th, Davidson was losing his patience. He was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel this. We're, we're done. I'm going to cancel this deal. Obviously, it's not going to happen. Well, as we all know, during that time, Cohen was having trouble getting the, the money because the National Enquirer wasn't willing to pay. They didn't want to buy the Stormy Daniel story, number one, because they said, oh, we don't want to be involved with, you know, something involving a porn actress because of our contracts with places like Walmart. But also, if you recall, when uh, David Pecker was on the stand, he admitted their legal counsel warned them, this is going to be a campaign finance violation. They knew up front, if you give Trump this gift, essentially, it is considered to be a campaign donation. So they backed out. Then Cohen, you know, went to Trump. Trump wasn't going to pay it. So, you know, Trump didn't want to pay it at all. Trump was saying string her out until after the election, and then we don't have to worry about it, which proves he didn't give a damn about Melania. And so that's why Cohen ended up pulling the cash out of his home equity line of credit, which I should say his uh, banker also testified today. He was one of the first people. He had said, you know, yes, Cohen lied to the bank about what he was using that money for because it was supposed to be used for home improvements. So the deck is stacking up against Trump. You know, we'll have to see if this one MAGA juror is a lone holdout, if he actually can be an honest person when it comes time to, for judgment. Um, but yeah, it's not looking good for Trump except for that juror. I wanted to quickly mention too that Trump lost another appeal today. He was trying to shut down this trial again. He was trying to either shut it down or get the judge removed for being biased. And a New York appeals court said no, they denied his request. So. The show will go on. <laughs> anyway, I will let you all know when I hear more, which means on Thursday, because, of course, there is no uh, trial on Wednesday. This court, for some reason, is shut down that day. So Thursday, we'll have more news about the Trump trial. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, and subscribe. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.